Yo, listeners, welcome to Tetsuo Tells a Story. I'm Tetsuo. Please enjoy these four true, terrifyingly scary monk stories. So, let us begin. <laughs> Story 1 When I was 10 years old, I moved with my parents and two brothers from Milwaukee, Oregon to Portland. I was sad at first because I have grown fond of our old house. We were only able to stay in Milwaukee for two years because of complicated circumstances. Suffice to say, it was a rough neighborhood. Too rough for my brothers and me to grow up in. My little brother was only four when we moved out. I didn't really like our Portland house at first because it was big and unfamiliar. There was only one kid in my neighborhood, and he was seven. I also had to get used to sharing a room with my little brother, which was unfamiliar territory as well. I was used to having personal space while my older brother and the baby slept in the same room. I now had to share everything while my big brother got his own bedroom, but I got used to it. A year later, I was more comfortable with the Portland house, but I still had uncomfortable feelings in certain areas of the house. I had never felt this way before with the last house. In my bedroom, we had a huge closet where we kept most of our stuff. Cleaning the room meant stuffing all of our stuff into the closet and saying we were done. This usually didn't fly when my dad came in to inspect afterwards, but sometimes we got away with it. One particular day, when it didn't fly, I was stuck in my room cleaning out the gigantic closet. We had a very large toy box in the back of the closet in which we kept most of our toys. It was long and deep enough for an adult to lay inside with the lid shut. It was kind of like a coffin now that I think about it. The old box was built by my grandfather to store wood for the winter when my dad was a kid. My dad filled it with firewood when he was growing up. Our new house didn't have a wood stove so my parents cleaned the cobweb and bark fragments out for us so we could keep our toys stored inside. The lid was very heavy and had a handle to help when it needed to be opened. The lid of the box was actually quite heavy for a five-year-old, so I usually left it open for my brother to access the contents easily. When I finished cleaning the room that day, I closed the closet door and went about my business. That night, I lay awake in my bed trying to sleep. While I don't have this problem anymore as an adult, I used to have trouble falling asleep at night. I would lie there, staring at the ceiling, wondering if I would ever fall asleep. That night, I sat in silence, listening to my brother's little quiet breaths underneath me. We shared bunk beds, and I was on the top level. I glanced over to the other side of the room, where the closed door to the hallway was. Next to the door was my dresser and a couple of framed pictures and a digital clock with red numbers. I remember seeing the display read 1111 in the darkness. My mom used to say that at 1111, you should always make a wish. I closed my eyes and wished that I could fall asleep. I awoke suddenly to a loud noise. I was sleep dazed and disorganized. I tried opening my eyes to adjust the darkness, but all I could see was the clock's face on the other side of the room. The time was between 2 or 3 in the morning. My heart was jammed into my throat and beating rapidly. I had heard that sound before. I struggled to think what woke me up and realized it was the sound of the toy box lid in the closet slamming shut. The lid was heavy. And if you weren't careful, it would come smashing into your head while you were trying to grab something from inside. I leaned over the edge of the bunk bed and tried to look down at my little brother. 
I couldn't hear him breathing. It was too dark to see anything. I had to assume he was still there, but all I could really hear at this point was my rapid heartbeat in my head. I swallowed a few times, struggling to hear anything. After a few minutes, I calmed down a bit and my heartbeat slowed. I still couldn't hear my brother's breathing. The floors of the whole house were old plank style hard wood that creaked and groaned under any weight. I listened for footsteps, thinking maybe he went to the bathroom. I heard nothing for what seemed like hours. At some point, I was legitimately freaked out and couldn't go back to sleep. Why did the toy box lid slam shut in the middle of the night? I squinted in the direction of the closet doors. I couldn't see anything in the dark. It was then I remembered that I was playing with one of my dad's flashlights a few days ago. I had put the flashlight into a duffel bag that was hanging from the bedpost at the end of my bed. I sat up and grabbed the bag. The flashlight was still inside. When I twisted the flashlight to turn it on, I suddenly heard my brother gasp. <gasps> I quickly smothered the flashlight under my blanket and listened carefully. He was in the bed, still, underneath me. His regular breathing resumed. I was relieved that he was still there and it eased my mind a bit. But my heart began racing again when I thought about shining the flashlight over at the closet. What would I see? Was someone in there? Would the doors be open? It took a few seconds for me to build up the courage. Finally, I shined the light at the doors. To my horror, the closet was open. I swear I had left it shut after I cleaned the room earlier. I could see the toy box in the back of the closet, closed. It had slammed shut that was for sure. I realized after a few minutes now that I had been staring at the closet for a long time. I turned the flashlight back off. I really couldn't sleep now. I kept thinking about the open closet just sitting there in the darkness. It began to bother me and I really didn't want to close the doors. I was too scared to get out of bed so I just sat there wide awake. I hoped that I would be able to fall back asleep, but time seemed to stand still. When I looked back at the clock, only five minutes or so had gone by since I've woken up. Suddenly, I hear another noise from the closet. This time, it was a low, muffled growl. Not an animal, but electronic. It was the sound of my brother's stuffed toy, a lion, going off inside the toy box. I was paralyzed with fear. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. It growled two or three more times. Then, silence again. After a few moments, I decided I need to wake my brother up. Terrified, I shined the light down to the bottom bunk and my heart stopped. He wasn't there. He wasn't in the bottom bunk. I began screaming and ran out of the hallway. I ran all the way down to my parents' room and began pounding on their door to wake them up. When they rushed to the door and opened it, I saw my little brother asleep in their bed. Who was that breathing in my room? What did I hear in the closet? When I explained everything to my parents, they told me I was having a bad dream. I wish that was the case. I was wide awake. Story 2 It was the summer of 1986 or 1987. My cousin's family had just moved to California for only a couple of months now. His family had gone back to Oregon for the strawberry season. If you were around during that time period, you would know what I was talking about. Anyways, my cousin was the only one who stayed in the apartment for the summer. One evening, he called me over 
and kept him company for the night. He came over and picked me up. That night before going to bed, I went to take a shower and he was in the living room. To get to the bathroom, you have to go through the bedroom. It was a one bedroom apartment, the type that had the bathroom built into the bedroom. Anyways, I went into the bathroom and I started my shower. I started to shampoo my hair with my eyes closed, of course. As I was lathering the shampoo into my hair, I felt someone's hand touch my chest. I opened to look, but the shampoo went into my eyes and started to sting them, so I quickly closed them. I quickly rinsed my hair, thinking that I was sure I locked the door. After rinsing my hair, I got out of the shower to make sure the bathroom door was locked. And it was! I forgot about the rest of the shower and just dried myself and came out. My cousin was still in the living room watching TV. I asked him if he came into the bathroom, and he just said, No, I was watching TV the whole time. I told him what happened, so we just took off and we went to sleep at my place. The next night, I told him I didn't want to go back to his place anymore, so he went back to his place alone and slept in his own bedroom. And that's when it came, and it sat on him while he was sleeping. He said he saw a dark figure. He couldn't move at first, so he started to fight it. Eventually, he got free and went outside to his car. He went into the back seat and laid down to sleep. As he was starting to feel sleepy though, he could see a dark shadow come to the side window at his feet. He fell asleep after that. That night, he had a dream. He dreamed that there was a blonde teenage American girl that came to him. She told him, No matter where you go, how far you run, I'm going to chase you until I get you. I followed you all the way from Portland, Oregon. The next couple of days, he called his family and they came back to help him move. When you have something like this chasing you, you're supposed to just say that you're going out for the moment and will come back later. Never about moving. It will follow you if you're moving. After they moved, it disappeared. Story 3 This is a story told to me by one of my cousins. Who is the person experiencing this event? For those that have lived or once lived in the refugee camp Ban Vinai in Thailand, maybe you've heard and possibly have experienced some of these unusual events. I've heard that there's this place, I guess it's close to the market, where people used to always release the spirit of the dead, or Jopli. Some clan uses it during the funeral processions, such as Juja. From the way he describes the setting, it's his house first, located near the open field, where they release the spirits of the dead. Then adjacent to the open field to release the spirits of the dead is the public communal bathroom. Then lastly, the farmer's market and other small stores. This is from what I can remember. Anyways. Back on to the story. During one of our family get-togethers a while back, my cousin was telling me about his experience one night during their stay in Ban Vinay. One late evening during the season when almost everyone was sick, most usually getting diarrhea. I don't know, but this might be from the rainy season because of the possible water contamination. Their family usually prepares and eats dinner sooner than other family. After dinner and before the sun starts to set, my cousin's stomach hadn't been feeling too well. He's taken a couple of trips to the public bathroom already. As the night falls and the moon rises, it was close to bedtime. 
I remind you that my cousin is ready married and had kids ready at this time. After everyone falls asleep and hours have passed by, my cousin was awakened by a stomach ache. Sure enough, it was likely that he was going to have to take another trip to the public bathroom. He tried to hold it in as much as he can, but as we all know, there's nothing that can hold that back when it wants to come out. He is aware that rumors have it that people have heard many things at night and have seen many unexplainable things, but he also really needed to use the bathroom. He toughened up and got himself out of bed, and he grabbed his flashlight. As he was walking out the door, he turned on his flashlight and found it to be very dim. Looking up at the night sky, he told himself that he didn't need the flashlight as it was a full moon, and and there were enough lights for him to see his way. So he turned off his flashlight and started walking fast towards the public bathroom. As he approached the outskirts of the place where they released the spirits, he started to get chills already. As mentioned before, he was very well aware of all the strange things that people have saw and heard on that spot. He quickly walks as fast as he could past that place and towards the public bathroom. As he approaches the communal public bathroom, he notices that he can now see the big tree in front of the public bathroom. This means that he's pretty darn close to the public bathroom because the tree stands sort of right in front of that bathroom. He quickly makes his way to the public bathroom and shuts the door behind him. As he was relieving himself of the nasty stomach ache, he saw a shadow at the bottom of the public bathroom door where there is an undercut. The bathroom passes the door and he hears footsteps outside, like someone was walking around the public bathroom. He then sees the shadow again. At this point, he was getting freaked out already, but he couldn't do anything because he was, of course, busy himself. He pushes his stay in the public bathroom as quickly as he can. And as he was finishing up, his eyes were aiming at the bottom of the door to see if that shadow was there or not. He didn't see it anymore, so he got up, zipped up his pants, and made his way out. As he was walking out of the public bathroom, he noticed something or someone standing next to the big tree. This person or thing was quite tall, taller than the average Hmong person. By this time, he was scared to death. He started walking as fast as he could towards home. As he was walking past this huge figure, he looked at it, and it didn't have a face. It looked like it was constantly turning its face away from my cousin as he was walking away. While he was walking right past the figure, he felt his legs numb up. It's like when your legs go to sleep. He was trying to walk as fast as he could, but his legs weren't listening to him, which then made him collapse onto the ground. He looks up and he sees the dark figure smiling ear to ear, and this freaks him out. He pushed and crawled himself to get away from this thing, this entity, or whatever it was. And finally, as he got farther and farther away from this thing, his legs started working again. The minute he got control of his legs back, he took off running home. When he got home, he jumped right into bed. The next morning, he got up bright and early and went to see what he could have saw that scared him so much. He went to the tree where this thing was standing and found prints all around the tree. Now, these prints weren't human footprints. They looked like hooves. He went around the public bathroom and these prints were all around the public bathroom as well. After finding those prints, he knew that it was something supernatural and not human that he saw. Story 4 
Remember when you were a kid and your parents always advised you not to play hide and seek at nighttime, even when you were safe in a comfy home? I remember back when my siblings and I were playing hide and seek. We played in a dark room that I and my brothers slept in. Back then, we used to have two bunk beds for the four of us brothers. We used to live in this house in North Carolina where half of the building is underground, so our room has no window at all. It's completely dark when the lights go out. The rules of our hide and seek game was that the it has to find the others by feeling the way around the room and guessing who that person is and that person can't cheat by faking themselves to be someone else. Well, my little sister was it this time and she was pretending to be a tiger, looking for praise. She was roaring and moving about the room, trying not to laugh while also being silly. I was standing at one corner, trying to stay away from her. And then I hear her crawl under and went underneath one of our lower bunk beds. And she started calling out all of our names. She called everyone. Then we started joking around that whoever it is, is faking themselves. But then, all of a sudden, my little sister starts yelling for help. One of my little brothers was standing right next to the switch, so he quickly turns on the light, right when he heard my sister screaming. As the lights were on, we looked around and everyone was pretty much out of her reach. We all looked at each other like, if we're over here, why is she calling out our names? She was still under the bed and now crying hysterically. She then crawls out really fast and runs outside to the kitchen. And that's where mom was, still setting up table for dinner. My sister runs into my mom and hugs my mom very tight. Of course, we didn't know what had happened. She was just crying. And when my mom asked her what was wrong, my sister didn't answer. So my mom just brushed it off as, oh kids. So we kind of brushed it off too. The next day, my little brothers and I were playing a video game. My sister comes to me and tells me that the night before when we were playing hide and seek, something grabbed her when she was under the bed and she thought it was me because I'm the oldest and whatever it was, it had a very strong grip on her ankle. She said that she said my name first but I didn't answer, so she started calling everyone's name, but no one answered. So she reached and grabbed the arm to see if she can feel our watches and or my sister's bracelet, so she'll know who it was. But when she did, whatever it was, it had an arm that was hairy, thick hairs all over its forearm where she grabbed. And that's when she freaked out. After she told us that, there were no more hide and seeking in our room, even during the day. I guess you guys can say that we grew up after that night. We never played hide and seek ever again. We did let our parents know. At first, they didn't seem interested in our little story. But later, they did do a jingle bell or spiritual cleanse for the whole family. My brothers and I only slept on one of the two bunk beds. We slept two to each level of one of the bunk beds because we were that scared. It was nearly two months before we kinda started to forget about this incident. Almost a year has passed since that incident and everyone seems to be doing well. I used to be a heavy sleeper, but for a while before this one very night, I've been waking up in the middle of the night to fix my brothers on their bed. I would fix them on their bed because they would snore and I couldn't go to sleep. My dad said for us to sleep on our sides so we wouldn't snore as much. But occasionally, my little brothers would flip on their back to fall asleep. Well, one night, I had a dream that I woken up again to go fix my brothers because they were snoring. But when I step on the stairs from the top bunk to go down to them, 
Something grabbed my ankle. I reached down and grabbed its wrist, and it was hairy. And that's when I woke up into total darkness. And yet, yes, my brothers were all snoring, and I can't go back to sleep. But after what I saw from that vision inside of my head, I just lay low and kind of got used to it. We moved out a year later. Never live in a house that is built half buried underground. Thanks everyone for listening in on these true, long, scary stories. I gotta be honest, I sort of scared myself too telling these stories. So for the next episode, let me know what type of stories you want to listen to. If you enjoyed these stories, remember to like, share, and subscribe to Tetsuo Tells a Story. Do you have a story to tell? Let me know and I can read it to the world. See you in the next episode.